then again uh, like in poverty forms then again covid 19 uh, then again you know it comes to uh, uh, again uh, understanding what is sustainability then flashcards So welcome back guys, uh, this is Vardhan Kulkarni as you know, uh, so yesterday we were just looking into sustainability, then SDGs, uh, sustainable development goals, then again, uh, we were like, you know, understanding the sustainable, the flashcards, the self assessments, um, like, you know, it's all about the sustainability, what we are looking into uh, yesterday's format. Uh, so yeah, let's continue for the uh, today's uh, topics. So yeah, uh, yesterday I was just you know just briefing out on uh, you know health uh, lives and promote the well-being of the ages. So the pandemic uh, has you know uh, due to pandemic thing you know the life the shorten the life expectancy. So due to this you know uh, you know 94 percent of the countries are still reporting on one or more uh, COVID cases uh, regularly or on daily basis actually. So you know on these basis you know on these conditions how how could the sustainable uh, uh, persist so you could just you know uh, say that you know if you if you can just uh, you know uh, like for example if you say uh, if you if you take a, a you know a, a dose of vaccination so that could you know help you out fight uh, uh, or you can say uh, you, you that uh, you know uh, you know covid 19 and it enhances the immune system so and the in, as in decade process so you know all those you know uh, to ensure the healthy living lifestyles to and promote the well being in all ages, in all sector of ages, including a reproductive health, a maternal health, or a child health, it could be any kind of health. Which uh, uh, these kind of COVID 19s have affected a lot between the uh, common people. So uh, coming back to it, uh, you know, uh, in 2019, uh, COVID 19, uh, like you know, uh, coming from back then. So you know, just see, um, there were more than you know 1.1 million so who or nine percent of children who you know fell ill and grades below uh, you know uh, there were minimum reading proficiency of below below one or 2020. So again, then participation in organized pre uh, pre primary learning increased from 60 uh, 65 percent in 2010 to 73 percent uh, increase in uh, 2019. So there was a drastic change around you know uh, six seven percent from 65 to 73 from around 19 years. Yeah, and then you know you could say uh, basic school infrastructures again it uh, depends on the school infrastructures. So uh, if you are you know uh, you know drinking waters and the electricity and hand washing facilities and those uh, infrastructures also uh, hold on the support of you know uh, having our lifestyle uh, better life uh, lifestyle and well being. So uh, you could say you know uh, uh, coming coming back to gender equality. So here uh, gender equality is as in says that you know. Uh, you know, achieve gender equality within the empower all women and girls as well. So you know, uh, there should be equal participation. There, there should be equal uh, urge to you know participate in any other uh, many different formats in uh, in order to make up uh, you know uh, decision making is crucial for COVID nineteen response and recovery. So uh, while in uh, COVID nineteen case, if considering the COVID nineteen cases, so then uh, it comes with the gender equality. Like what if? Uh, the male uh, male candidates or the male persons who were just dominating, then you, if, if they are, you know, just um, not giving any chance to, you know, women or girls to, you know, improvise their ideas or put their ideas into uh, practices. So what would have happened? Like, what if, you know, if you're staying at home and, you know, you are the, you know, your mom is the only woman or the woman, uh, only woman in your family. No, uh, uh, apart from that, you, uh, you, your brothers, your father stays, and you know, you all of you feel sick. And what if your uh, mom doesn't, you know, show up 
and if there is no equal uh, equality or uh, is, uh, kind of you no know, uh, if she doesn't show uh, her strength then what would be the situation in your family then you know if so it's a kind of you know uh, just a basic example what i'm trying to give it so it's just like you know a woman equal uh, equal participation in in order to uh, maintain a, a wealthy being or you could just a healthy living being uh, due to a covid 19 outbreak so i know there's a violence against women so there are persons of unex uh, unacceptably high levels and intense uh, by the pandemic so due to pandemic there are lots of changes what had happened in one among three women or in 736 million people have been subjected to physical and sexual violences on the least in their lifetime since the age of 15. so since the age of 15 you know one among three have been you know uh targeted they have been you know uh cornered so that they you know they're at at least uh, like they have been you know uh, uh, like physically subjected so that they can you know, targeted by our sexual violences as well so you know then uh, the present situation says that 25.6 percent are in the national parliaments uh 36.3 percent are in local government 22 or uh, 28.2 percent are in managerial positions so around uh, then again the next uh, picture shows that you know up to 10 million of girls and you know are the risk of child marriage so you know uh, there are uh, certain situations that in the probably in the rural areas so you know those uh, you know there are situations that you know uh, people who are in rural areas they tend to uh, force their child they, fo they force their daughters to get married at the early ages so what happens is they are, uh, uh, either considering again uh, considering the covid 19 cases then what that would have resulted in a different format then you know uh, in addition to the 10 100 millions were projected to become a child brides before their uh, pandemic so before pandemic there were uh, around 10 million girls who again uh, it's a uh, child marriage again so it's uh, uh, the thing so pandemic is added the burden on unpaid domestic and care work and squeezing women out of labor force so what does this mean actually so this uh, what is uh, what it describes or what it says is that you know a woman who works for the wealthy wealthy living style or a healthy living being in the family are unpaid in domestic or care work so they usually do right uh, they usually do a uh, care work for the family so what happens is you know they're unpaid domestically so uh, women already spend our you know 2.5 uh, times or many hours as men are unpaid domestic and the care work so as much as men do in home so there are not much paid uh, so obviously they're not paid in home so that's the reason so we, when when the women are uh, working for the uh, you no know, family you know, they are unpaid or oh, due to which you know they are you know there will be working efficiency uh, uh shoots up to you know 2.5 times as many as uh, men working so the sustainable development goals uh, you know these are uh, you know these are in order to get these all the 70s there are 70 strategies that in order to uh that is given by united nations members countries that agree with uh to work upon so since uh, the goals are set to achieved by the year of 2030 so uh, SDG goals are call auction support member countries to take measures to ensure peace, prosperity for the people and the planet into the few, uh, better futures. So the what are the flashcards? Let's see the flashcards. What are they? So the first flashcard says no poverty, second one zero hunger, third good and wealth being, quality of education, gender equality, clean water, sanitizations, then um, affordable and clean energy decent work and economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure reduced inequalities sustainable cities and com uh, communities responsible uh, consumption and production climate action life below water life on land peace justice and strong uh, institutions partnerships and goals so these are the 17 sustainable goals which are actually needed for the wealth well-being of lifestyle and these you know these supports for a better living of a human being so in uh so what do you say you like you know uh in no poverty what does it mean what what does it say actually so no poverty means you know in order to help the poor uh poorer to get you know uh like you know get the uh, food you know on a daily basis so that they won't face any kind of uh, hunger issues or you could say uh probably you know they they are you know, fed with the proper uh you could say uh food and zero hunger again it with the come comes with the zero hunger at least they they get a two times a day or two times a meal a day so they could uh, in order while getting those they are in order to indirectly or diet they will you know benefit with a uh, good health or a wealth, wealth wealth being so uh if those uh you know these categories are also be fulfilled then probably they know they, they can get the quality of education so if they if you have you know uh proper food if you have a uh, proper nutrition then you know it you it would help you healthily 
living style you know uh, without any uh, affecting your uh, health issues then you know quality of education also improves uh, you know if you are like you know uh, uh, if you are like you know there's there's no uh, problems in, in in order to get you know, you know if the uh, lifestyle you know isn't isn't changed then the gender equality so in order to say that you know men and women are equals uh, you know probably as i said to you uh, there was a maternity rate uh, you know incre um, increased some uh, uh, like from uh, past many years as in survey gone so uh, as in gender equality so uh, the amount of importance given to the men is also given to the women then henceforth there are many other situations that you know women have uh, you know show their uh, you know capability and show the best to um, you know uh, to bring out the best uh, into a, a better development goals then you know see a clean water and sanitization again it comes to health so if you have a clean water and sanit uh, sanitization then what happens is you know again you don't feel ill then you have a proper nutrition format uh, you just have a stabilized uh, a way, a way of living then if you you can if you can see uh, uh, affordable and clean energy so you know if the what if the cost you know if the if the cost is uh, too much high and you know uh, the consumption of the energy is you know at the stable rate and everything comes in some uh, consumption of energy is you know not in too much uh, too much ratio then what happens you know the the the, uh, the sustainable of the uh, lifestyle or the goals what what we have the you know or the consumption of the power is you know uh, is stable and uh, if the you know if the one particular area is in you know, lots of uh, consumption of energy then what happens is you know there you need to generate more amount of energy in order you know literally in that you know you'll be getting a, producing a more amount of carbon dioxide that that would lead into global warming again uh, there are lots of cycles going going by so a decent work and economic growth so what does this say again uh, you know if you have a, a decent work i know your step by step process you know improving uh, uh, day by day so obviously uh, when you're just looking into that then again you will be having economic growth and you'll be financially stable uh, so that you know then you'll not be uh, meeting with a no poverty line uh, again uh, industry innovation and infrastructure so here it comes with uh, uh, better infrastructure so that you can you know have a, a better uh, a way of to uh, you know work in the lifestyles again uh, reduce inequalities so inequalities in the sense like they, they, you, you can just say in a, a simpler format as in partialities so though if that doesn't happen um, between the people then you just you can see you know you can sustain your uh, you can sustain your ideas or you can say uh, you can um, just put your ideas into practices and in develop in a proper manner so sustainable cities and communities so when you uh, when you uh, when the cities are sustainable and with clean uh, environment or the you know if, if you don't throw any garbage uh, garbage around uh, here and there and which is uh, clean and uh, sustainable so uh, that you know that promotes your healthy lifestyles again uh, with the uh, communities then again you, know, you also be tend to you know having a better uh, vision to uh, you know develop their um, develop your own ideas or you can say um, uh, you know you will be like your health will be stable and lots uh, lots of changes could happen so again responsible consumption and production what does this say so responsible consumption is uh, required the amount of uh, you know uh, consumptions what you daily need is uh, directly proportional to how much of you work or how much you required uh, on a daily basis so uh, if you, you know like if you, if you just uh, drastically use it now for uh, like you know randomly just use it or if you just run the um, you know uh, like um, on the tap and leave the water you know leave the water is gone waste then what would have happened the same amount of uh, water can be you know utilized be uh, other by uh, other neighbors or other uh, uh, part of the cities so the waters can be you know uh, used in well format and you know the, like for example that's what so uh, if the waters are used in a well format then again uh, everyone has um, equal rights to use uh, you know uh, use this um, uh, what you can say a uh, water or as in uh, as an example what i said so climate change again the climate change in order to if, if it is in the global warming or not if these if, if the uh, you know if the humans take care of their uh, societies and you know you know order to, you know uh, as in say uh, you just uh, reduce it and you keep uh, keep in track with you know uh, having a, a climate control uh, like if you keep the society clean in that in, in order uh, in, in order that you know the uh, the uh, you know social works or the social uh, environment what is that you know the environment uh, or the climate becomes you know uh, 
pure pure and you, you say there's no climate uh, change you no know, drastically and there is no you know there there would be no any other harmful effects and if you say uh, life below water and the if you throw uh, for example if you see uh, if you throw plastic bags or any other uh, you know uh, like you know, the waste products what you see thrown in the water then what what would happen this then the marine life or the life below water would you know uh, uh, emerge into a different uh, you know emerge into a, a pollution state that would lead into many uh, fisheries or many other marine lives what what's going into uh, the uh, present situation that would be uh, that would decline in a rate that you know they, you, you would not see any other uh, new species which are uh, up upcoming uh, you could see uh, you could see uh, daily uh, sometimes you could see that you know there are certain species which are still not discovered yet so if you what what if the pollutions or what if the garbages are thrown into the water and if you don't find out those new species though you know that would marine uh, that marine life you, you just can't explore and you could can't and uh, uh, have the cleanliness of water so that also depends on the sustainable goals so again life on land if you have you know proper uh, sustainable like you know if you have you know uh, if you have proper disposals of uh, wastage then again if you have you know uh, have a control of our pollutions then again if you have this proper uh, on a construct way then you know you you can you know have a proper uh, uh, life on land again having a fresh air and then you can have a clean environment as uh, you see uh, 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 example uh, covid 19 so uh, since the lockdown had happened i know there was a lot of change in bengaluru uh, you could see that you know there were lots of uh, plants grown in uh, flesh green trees you know there was a lots of uh, you know uh, beautiful scenarios that you could see uh, by your eyes so that you know you you could just believe by your own eyes thinking that you know the uh, life what what was there was was totally uh, uh, you know uh, in the bangalore so it, like, you just could uh, explore and you just say wow well, this is, is is this our city so that would uh, you know enhance this so peace justice and strong institutions so what does this say again so peace justice institutions and strong institutions are uh, you know, uh, fighting for the cause with the proper uh, justice. So, you know, if you can justice uh, justify and work for the cause, then uh, there, uh, with uh, having a strong institution, then you could attain a sustainable goal as well. Then again, partnership with the goals. Again, wh what is that partnership with the goals? If if one and another works for the, for the same uh, concept or the same, uh, uh, or you can say same development goals, then probably uh, again it, it can say this is the partnership for the goals. Then again, it attains the. Uh, for it can also be said as a sustainable goals, which are among 17 goals for to transform our world. So, how to apply SDGs? Or oh, SDGs again, it says sustainable development goals. So, there are five different sustainable goals which are personally uh, applied in our daily lives. So, uh, having good uh, good health and uh, wealthy being, gender equality, clean water sanitization, affordable and clean energy, sustainable cities and communities. So, all these five uh, sustainable goals actually uh, impact on the human life. So. Um, giving the you know um, uh, enhancing enhancing the humans uh, uh, lifestyle uh, you know giving the greater impact again okay, um, you could see here uh, you know uh, self assessment water sustainable development goals and how many sustainable development goals are there in total there are 17 sustainable development goals what is the purpose of the framing these uh, sustainable goals in order to uh, have the you know uh, betterment of the uh, living style again you will list down some uh, uh, problem areas that could be covered under the sdgs then so if the, if the pollution control has been taken down then again so lifestyle uh, takes place clean environment uh, takes place again uh, your health uh, you know uh, issues takes place so all these you know comes before that so like next is the next next part social innovation and mindsets so basically here what we'll be understanding is introduction to mindsets required to social innovation and application of the mindsets so uh here what what we do is uh you you just say uh uh just a second uh see uh before that before that just a second um yeah Pre-work two sessions. So Pre-work. What what we do is we just see the case study of the Gopinath or the watch movies Sarai, uh, uh, Sarai uh, Paturu, and you also answer the following questions. Uh, just there's a video over here. I'll just see. You could see this uh, from riding a bullock cart to owning an airplane. The true story of Captain Gopinath. So this uh, Captain Gopinath, he he used to ride a bullock cart 
and you know using those but then again uh, from that to stage uh, from that stage he started owning he, he owns the airline so let's see the story what uh, what is this says so sarai but true is a tamil movie uh, starring actor uh, surya scheduled to release amazon prime in uh, november 2000 uh, in uh, november 12 going by trailer the movie is an action packed drama about the man from a village who takes on politician business people bureaucrats to fulfill his dream by of launching a low cost uh, airline services so uh, mr gopinath captain gopinath so what he did was you know he's uh, you know he releases amazon prime on november 12 uh, going by the trailer the movie is an action packed drama so this man from a village who takes on politicians business people bureaucrats and f- to fulfill his dream in launching the low cost airline services by you know uh, you know launching your low cost air and services there's a quite a lot of drama many tears and long near crash and the course of the actor surya street maxwell so what happens is here here in this uh, you know in this lifestyle there was a lot of drama there was a lot of tears in his eyes there was a nearby crash of the course of the actor surya had a trade max back so uh, so it all depends on how the uh, you know how how, we, uh, how how was this lifestyle going on so artistic license aside the movie is actually based on the captain g r gopinath the pioneer of the low cost aviation in india so the movie was inspired in to, uh, in his 2011 autobiography simply five uh, simply fly was a movie which was called as uh, which outlines the journey of the young boy who went from riding a bullock cart to owning a airplane well perhaps uh, not as a, a dramatic as a film his vision really did change his life going in india wherever he had his ideas set in the stone what ma- most of this uh, take us granted today so the flight uh, to almost any major cities the price of the middle class salaried person can afford so his main intention was that you know uh, at the low cost airline services he could uh, afford to me- everyone everyone including politician business people bureaucrats and many others so uh, the there was an autobiography called uh, simply five uh, like you know that had you know initiated like he he, he was the one who you know uh, you know he was the person who was riding a bulla cart uh, uh, you know changed his you know he was an uh, you know tamil movie star or actor who could say so he he just uh, uh, owned a uh, you know airline so he he just thought you know he just had an idea that you know even, even middle middle class salaried person can also afford uh, to or fly uh, fly uh, from one part of the city to another part of the city so uh, you know uh, or the medical uh, mid- uh, middle class family person can also be uh, afford the uh, tickets for the airline okay next uh, there was you know there was a hi there was in uh, there have been many laws in his flights uh, including there was the vision ended again uh, and there's a movie uh, may cause in this uh, choose to skip that there was his life story so full so far by still recording uh, amazon uh, amazing so who is this captain gr gopinath so the captain jo gopinath who actually he, he was born in 1951 the gor uh, rangana swami ayer gopinath was raised in a small village named gorar in karnataka and in the second of eight the children his father is a school teacher and a karnataka novelist so uh, captain g r gopinath's uh, father was uh, you know uh, school teacher and uh, karnataka kannada novelist uh, believe that the school were in a system of uh, recommendation and decided to teach his son at home so what happened after few years after school uh, home schooling gopinath was enrolled into fifth standard at the kannada medium school in 1962 he joined the sainik school bijapur where young boys are trained to join uh, join the armed forces so uh, what happened in the um, you know armed forces or the um, uh, sainik school uh, which is located in bijapur so uh, there the uh, sainik school trains the young boys to join uh, join the armed forces so he further went with the clear, clearing national defense academy exams nda that's uh, that could also be said as nda and a graduate from indian military academy so gopinath sent 8 years of uh, indian army and fought in 1971 ba- um, bangladesh liberation war so mr gopinath also fought in 1971 ba- bangladesh liberation war as well so at the age of uh, 28 he took uh, early re- uh, retirement from the army he went on to take series of entrepreneurial roles such as dairy farmer um, or uh, uh, sericulture uh, co- consultant poultry farm hotel owner enfield by dealer stock broker and finally uh, aviation entrepreneur so uh, these are the sectors you know he just got uh, you know uh, taking re- retirement of the age of earlier 
he you know he started his you know entrepreneur business or the uh, or you can say or entrepreneurial journey uh, through all, all these formats okay as in uh, when we say uh, life as an aviation entrepreneur so well, let's see what 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 what, what was a fact behind that so captain gopinath aviation center started in 1996 uh and you know it is divided into three segments so for there were three segments uh, it was the first he started with a chartered helicopter service uh, you know uh, under the name of deccan aviation this was aimed to providing the chartered helicopters for vips the services was hit among many peer politicians and took uh, deccan aviation uh, uh, shoppers to the uh, to their travels so uh, here um, many vips took their these shoppers and to you know, travel from one part of the uh, cities after testing success their venture he decided to try something that benefited the low class and upper class middle uh, family so it was a dream that the cost of airlines was so high at that time so one had to be a vip or the company pay for the tickets to uh, take the mode of travel so what happens is you know if the situation is as, uh, such that you know if you you uh, you know if the if you are in a middle class uh, middle class uh, and you know Uh, you don't have the money to uh, buy then uh, uh, at that time you know the uh, the flight fare was you know too high so you know mr gopinath's vision was you know uh, have the flight fares you know you know proper manner so that they can uh, you know allow the middle class family to uh, uh, have the uh, flight so uh, at that time you know uh, well, if you are you know uh, if you if you are a vip or uh, uh, or if you are working in a company if the company is pays for you then you would, you would have taken that mode of transport so you know uh, uh, if that situation is so lower class middle uh, lower class or uh, lower middle class people who aren't able to fly in the uh, uh, you know aircraft so uh, mr gopinath had a vision to in order to you know uh, yeah, launch a aircraft so that the lower class middle uh, people can fly so the, uh, let's see the second venture the his second venture the air deccan was also launched in uh, launched in 2003 aimed to booming indian economy the flights from bangalore to hubli there uh, you know it was a booming economy with the flights of you know uh, from the bangalore to hubli there was a launch uh, to the launch of a airlines gopinath invested 5 crore rupees and he gathered of his all his savings from family, family and uh, friends and family so uh, in 2003 so since he i know launched a deccan uh, you know he invested 5 crores you know gathering all his savings from uh, family or friends or you can say so he he probably he he, he didn't have any other savings though uh, in by by 2006 air deccan uh, deccan operated a route network of seven base airports and maintained a low turn around times the airline of tickets of 50% of the price of airlines operating at the time so uh, comparing to other airlines so you know he offered uh, 50% of the ray, uh, price raise owing the uh, of no uh, frills approach this included a uniform uh, economy cabin class to by paying an on service uh, like food and beverages cancellation also were also made by the extra prices so um, by this you know he uh, he also obtained the uh, or possibilities or you could say uh, by this you uh, he also got the you know uh, profits so so then the airline claimed a 22% stake in the indian aviation industry by fleet of 43 aircrafts making 350 flights a day and more than 60 destinations uh, they earned revenue through all the advertisements they were allowed to uh, within the uh, outside of the aircrafts then well known of the industry uh, introducing 24 uh, uh, 24 hour call centers uh, through all the filters call back by their tickets so then again uh, since they had already made their fame they had their uh, made their already name then again in 2007 the company started the face uh, stiff competitions from other areas including heavy losses and gopinath was forced to sell liquor ban uh, vijay malya who merged it with the kingfisher airlines and rebarter with the kingfisher red so uh, you know his uh, third venture uh, was an air cargo services were called deccan th- uh, 360 but then there was also shut down in 2013 which which is a revenue stream had an adequate of a breakdown even so what happened is you know when he had you know um, you know tie up with vijay malya you know uh, he, he had to sell a liquid barn so uh, from that you know so he started his third venture was you know at, at least you could uh, get some profits so he uh, he started in the cargo uh, cargo services which is called as deccan 360 so uh, that also had to shut down by 2013 uh 30 by revenue stream of which i a non adequate of uh break of break even 
so what does gopinath do today you know what does he do, do today not only uh, air taken uh, changes the aviation sector in india forever but also turn flying into reality in every medical class uh, mid, uh, middle class families gopinath went into consent in the lok sabha elections in 2014 which turned up to be failed attempt, attempt again so he turned up to the lok sabha in 2014 which is uh, a failed event for him as well then again uh, after being so on active and proactive uh, columnist in media hours uh, and you know to in like uh, 2017 he went to another book named you cannot miss this flight so essays on emerging the india which you know captures gopinath's interest and the uh, and depth of the commitment where uh, you know he, uh, where he lives now uh, the uh, the 68 year old now lives in bangalore with his wife and the two children so uh, right now what he is doing is, is, is he just recently wrote on 2017 uh a novel called uh, you cannot miss this flight uh so that you know now he is currently of 60, uh, 68 years of uh, old age who who lives in bangalore with his wife and two children okay so uh, seeing here you know what shifted due to kopinath innovation so uh, there were you know uh, he also saw the ups and downs here coming back so he uh, he just saw you know what what led him you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, getting the profits then again what led him to the losses he understood so so based on that you know he also got into different formats uh, then again well, who do you classify that is social innovation and why so if you uh, if you can say it was a social innovation so uh, if, if it is yes then you know you could say that you know yes it was uh, in order to purely uh, uh, for the medicals people uh, to you know uh, they could uh, also uh, uh, you know experience the flight uh, between from one one state to another or one city to another so what what would you say the key mindset so it, uh, key takeaways so key takeaways is it's or upon the mindset or determined a format which is you know uh helping to uh getting inspired uh you know uh, you know uh, getting the you know uh, getting a creative ideas and uh, taking out a well 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 lifestyle again okay. uh so exploring mindset so uh, so i was as i was uh, telling there was mindset something uh, you know there are different mindsets as well so there are um, you know eight types of mindsets initiative and self reliance future orientations creative and innovation critical thinking and problem solving communication and collaboration Uh, comfort with a risk flexibility and adaptability again opportunity organ uh, uh, recognition so what does this all mean so initiative and self reliance initiative uh, as in uh, let's take an example of uh, gr gopinath uh, captain gopinath so he he initiated he initiated process or he initiated a way of lifestyle that you know uh, you know uh, the middle class people can also fly can also experience the flight uh you know uh, to have a journey you know, from one one part of the city to another part of the city uh you know uh, I, due to that times you know 2006 uh, or to some, some years so you know, and if you are vips or you know if the flight fees are paid by the company or you know at that time itself you could fly but you know gr gopinath who was a captain so he uh, initiated he was he was in a self reliance he was self relied so that he initiated a, a format so that the middle class female family can also fly what was the future orientation so even though he had a lots of breakdowns he, he was a future orientation and he you know uh, done a different formats of you know uh, writing a novel you know he uh, he also started a choppers there was there are three uh, sessions as you saw so there was a creative and innovation so mr just Go- gopinath captain gopinath was also a creative and innovator so uh, he was just uh, thinking in a different creatively and you know just uh, just uh, bringing out a new uh, booming ideas which is you know we could say innovation so critical thinking and problem solving so he understood what was the problem so between the socialized people he understood that you know middle class people can't uh, afford the fare tickets to uh, fly among the flights you know uh, sit in the flights and again he also uh, you know came came through you know a, a problem that you know, there was you know like you know uh, if, if you can uh, you know pay for the beverages uh, on the flight on the midday flight then you know uh, there was a chance that you know there would be an again income on the same way so that was a critical thinking mindset what he had so that he could you could just think away that you know the people who are you know just you know uh, Uh, buying the beverages on the mid flight then that amount of money can be also invested in another part of business 
then again he had communication and collaboration so uh, as you saw uh, seen that you know uh, he had collaboration uh, collaborated with uh, kingfisher vijay malya so uh, since the liquor went down so he had to sell all those things but then later on um, before that you know if you can see just see a uh, focus on the communication so he since he had a uh, uh, communication uh, mindset so you know just focusing on you uh, know uh giving the proper communication to the people or delivering the proper uh, content to the people you know the communication is actually required also what if you know uh, if you are a very highly talented guy and you know if you don't have uh, proper communication or um, what if you know uh, then like what you tend to deliver isn't approachable or is it understandable then what would have happened so all your ideas are in vain so uh, communication is also a kind of mindset that which is uh, essential for your daily life to in order to convey your ideas or to put your ideas into practices so uh, to you know you know this uh, helps you to bring you into a better format and again uh, comfort with risk and then if you can say uh, comfort with risk so uh, you know like uh, jr gopinath he also earned a lot of money but with risk so he what he did was he uh, you know uh, those the money what he did was he uh, invested in different formats of business then you know he also seen the comforts and the, apart from leaving the comforts he also got into uh, lift, uh, risk management then he also understood what would be the problem uh, upcoming and he also managed with uh, a critical thinking uh, mindset flexibility and adaptability flexibility and adaptability you could say just you know say that flexibility is um, based on the uh, situations or uh, for, for example you know if i can say you know if you if you need to travel from one one point to another point and you know you just don't have you know a motorcycle or say or a car you you know you are you you just need to uh, depend on the situation and flexibly okay fine if there is no bikes or if there is no cars then i am okay with to go with the bus uh, the government buses or the auto uh, uh, you know so that's a flexibility and adaptability is uh, using you know uh, you know uh getting used to the current situation getting used to the current situation for example as uh, as i was just saying uh, saying uh, you know like you know if the uh, you know as a, uh, as an example i just said that you know uh since you don't have a bike or if you don't have a car then again uh using that ability you just you travel from one point of the uh, part of the city to another part of city um you know by auto so that's adapting the change or uh, what's going on opportunity recognition the most important mindset again okay, requires so when you uh, for example if i say uh, you know and there is a you you see uh, uh, you you get a hand on uh, like you know you see uh, you see that you know you writing government examinations can you know help you out uh, getting the government uh, jobs again uh, uh, then seeing you know getting into bigger companies with a better package then you know you understand you recognize the opportunities that initiates you to you know that is also a mindset which initiates for the uh, you know better lifestyle these all these mindsets self reliance again future orientation creative innovations critical thinking problem solving communication collaboration comfort with risk uh, flexibility and adaptability opportunity recognizations so all these are you know um, are mindsets which is uh, need to be a uh, uh, need to be in an entrepreneur uh, mindset so uh, so as in social uh, innovator uh, as in social innovator what mindsets would this person have so uh, again you just saw this uh, you know mindsets uh, you know uh, he should be you know uh, creative thinking you know uh, problem solver communication all this requires again what motivates them to solve this problem so if the problem isn't solved what, what if the problem isn't solved then what would have happened or uh, let's say uh, take a live example um, you know there are you know the day by day you know petrol raises or the diesel cost is you know just booming uh, you know uh, increasing drastically then if the uh, ev ev vehicles aren't in the market then what would have happened then you know just you have to there is no other go right so you have to pay uh, you know what what's over the conveniences you have to pay full uh, full your tank then more you know travel so for your daily basis so um, if if the problem isn't solved if probably there would be chances that you know uh, uh, you 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 won't be having a proper lifestyle or if you can say if there is a breakout in uh, some incident and if that doesn't solve uh, the investment of the uh, the uh, the investment you put on the bike or if the car uh, isn't repaired then what would have happened so uh, that has initiated to the solve problems 
what skills do they have so again the skills again it comes with uh, you know having uh, critical thinking problem solving uh, and communications these are the skills right <coughs> excuse me so uh, what does this support systems look like the support systems looks like you know uh, uh, you could say um, you know supporting uh, for example you could say collaboration so when the you know one one company has a better fame a better name um, you know just you can by collaborating with them this is supposed to support your company in order to you know uh, grow your business uh, uh, in the society or the social value uh, right uh, so in our in op uh, optional activity the reverse social innovation so uh, thinking of here uh, sindhiki is a small village in karnataka the school in sindhiki uh, has about 100 students the school faces a problem of low attendance so on uh, any given of uh, 40, 40 to 50 to come to school, uh, your task is to come up with the five ideas that lower the attendance of the school. So uh, in a village called Sindhagi, uh, and, uh, located in Karnataka, so this uh, this uh, this school uh, I mean this uh, Sindhi, in the school of Sindhagi there are hundred students am among them the school had uh, face uh, had to face you know, a percentage of uh, no low attendance so in in see uh, in a daily daily basis forty to fifty students uh, had to come to school. So, uh, what would be five ideas that would you know, lower the attendance, uh, uh, attendance the school of by two twenty to twenty five percent? So, how would you feel while working in this challenge? So, what would you feel by working this challenge? Like, you know, what if you know, students, you know, uh, as in if like if if consider me, uh, I would just think uh, think that you know students are coming from far away distance. You know, there there's no uh, buses or there is no facilities to travel by. Um, probably they need to walk. So that's the reason uh, there's a uh, shortage of us attendance again. So what do you think will happen if the ideas are implemented? So uh, what do you think if you know, uh, you know, I, uh, as as I said, you, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, the school is far away from their uh, the, uh, their home uh, home uh, or where they stay. So uh, you know, if if uh, if if I implement my idea that the uh, traveling um, uh, you know, motorcycles or vehicles are you know. Uh, initiated by government of Karnataka, then if they are implemented, then probably there are chances that at least uh, at least there are uh, chances that are of on, around five percent of the attendance is also increased. And do you think your solution will, will be successful and why? If you if you strongly believe on your idea, then approximately then you'll be you know uh, thinking that your solution will you know successful because since then you understand you have uh, see that uh, again it comes with the uh, problem understanding. So you understood the problem. What was the problem? Then you you know uh, by a critical mindset, uh, critical thinking, you understood how uh, how could you overcome this problem? Again, all these things you know. We, Based on this, so your since your ideas is strong enough to overcome these uh, solutions, so you just you know uh, you'll be thinking that you know your uh, solutions will be successful, right? So uh, which mindset did you use today for this activity? So mindset is again critical thinking, again, right? So critical thinking again, um, you know you could say. Uh, uh, as in uh, critical thinking, then minds uh, again mindset with uh, um, you know you know uh, innovative ideas, correct? So all these. Uh, helps you know a, a proper uh, uh, developments uh, again uh, coming for the uh, next session is uh, you can see here innovation doesn't equal social good but social good can accelerate by innovation provided where the purpose is in the heart that innovation <coughs> so uh, coming uh, coming to model 2 innovation for entrepreneurs again there are different sessions here session 1 session 2 session 3 session 4 six, uh, okay there are uh, 11 sessions okay Identify the social problems, problem solving, understanding the problem and the users, understanding the problem by users too, empathy, framing the problem statement, designing the solution and ideation, designing the solution prototype, feedback, designing the solution iterate, designing the solution iterate part two. Again, in session session one, we'll understand the identify the social problems. What are the social problems? Uh, so they like you know uh, female foeticides, road accidents. Where those so small examples what what we saw about the social problems. But here we'll be still looking into a deeper cause. Uh, what, what what was the root cause of the problem? You know what was the you know uh, how how it is the uh, how the root cause are interconnected. How would the uh, five wise uh, methods can solve this problem? You know what would you know pro problem how the problems are identified on what kind of you know, social problems are these 
and then how the problem solving human centric approach so uh, as in there are seven steps process solving in practice then again you brainstorm you there are you know you think in a different way either in a, a diversion and conversion thinking so uh, again uh, and then brainstorming again uh, so it's a uh, reverse brainstorming so all these uh, understanding the problems and you uh, users uh, giving interviewing one so uh, you know you just uh, uh, like you know questioning and uh, listening then you'll be like you know being an interviewer uh, how do you understand the social problem and again um, you know you understand the problem which is using by interviewing again by you know social problems by you know check the interview as in you know uh, uh, you understand uh, you like when you when you are in an interviewer you know if you are if you see you know on your uh, uh, perspective of an interviewer how do you see the perspective of the problem so that would be the uh, of this was in session fourth uh, empathy again empathy also uh, uh, requires with uh, understanding the problem so uh, empathy while understanding the problem it also requires with uh, uh, how you understand the problems and describe the importance of empathy while social problem uh, social problems you want you also understand what is the importance of the empathy then again framing the problem statement again when you when you have a problem statement again you have you define the problem then again the problem statements are you just frame it out then you just help the you know create the problem statements by your own so when you uh you know start by uh, you know uh like uh, create what if you know uh, just uh, frame your own problem statement then understand the problem on your point of view then what would be the outcomes what would be the solutions what could be the uh, uh, significance what i could just see designing the solution ideation so uh, for, uh, just, we just understood the problems how could it could be solved and uh, for, for all those problems you know you just uh, design the solution for ideation so <clears throat> This, uh, you know, uh, each and every problems you just uh, bring out to uh, solutions, right? So you generate the ideas, then again, practice the brainstorming, then practice divergent and convergent thinking, uh, opposite thinking, characteristics of ideations, feasibility, visibility, uh, desirability, college solvers. Okay, design the solution prototype. Then again, you just, you know, you understand what is a prototype. Well, what are these prototypes? Why is it necessary? What kind of prototypes are? How do you create these prototypes? Okay. Next, second, five feedback. You know, if you want to understand, then how do you, you know, uh, why why the feedback is necessary and uh, what are the impo importance of the feedback? Getting ready with the, uh, getting ready to receive the feedback. Then guidelines of receiving uh, receiving feedbacks. Why why get feedback? Uh, role play then design the solution iterate so how do you design this there are certain steps then you know you present your prototypes give the uh, uh, give and receive feedbacks on the prototype uh, then again how, how can you make the prototype better then uh, design the solution iterate part two uh, appreciate and uh, importance of the user's feedback in designing discuss uh, feedback uh, then again uh, discuss various methods to collect feedback so there are various methods to collect feedback uh, no, no well, basically then why do we need feedback then, why, why, uh, then um then learn and share then again um feedback mechanism review your um, uh, feedback so all these are will be looking in this model okay coming back uh identify the social problems so how do we identify here in this topic will be you know just looking into the uh, importance of identifying the root cause of an issue so here a uh, problem three and five uh five by two is uh, to identify the root cause so uh, as we are looking into uh, if there is any problem so you know you just see uh if there is a problem arise we just look at uh, look it out how why when uh, uh, why it happened uh, from where it happened just look it out uh, why five eyes right so just lo look out for the root cause uh what what caused a problem okay uh, see uh, here in the problem three, uh, the effect rule of core problems and the causes. So problem three, the uh, like you could you could say that you know, uh, like if you if you can just see if you take out some problem, uh, if you can just um, see uh, some uh, some problem, so uh, you understand the cause. Just a second. You understand the cause. Then again, you find the what what was the core problem. Or well, then again, from the problem, what were the effects? What you have taken, correct? 
so again um so the, you um all this uh what happens is when when the problem arises you see causes core problems effects were from these problems what was the causes what was the core problems how would you you know uh solve these problems what are the effects which is going to be arise okay so why why as i was telling why 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 so each and every uh statement of the problem is you know linked with why 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 for example i say uh uh i need to travel from distance a to distance b then again uh, you know there's uh, there's no option rather than going by auto uh, just because there's a strike going on by you know government of uh, government uh, government buses then you know um, now i just describe you know uh, again why why is the uh, you know strike going on then again uh, what was the reason the strike going on you know like for example if they are getting not not getting enough of uh, enough of uh, paid uh, paid money or the salary uh then again why are they are not paid again every each and every problem statement is interconnected with why right uh our case let, let, let us look into case study agriculture in india is undergoing a structural change leading to crisis situations the rate of growth of agriculture output is gradually gradually declining in the recent years so the relative con contribution of agriculture on the gdp has declining over the uh, time steadily the performance of agriculture by the crop categories are also clearly indicates by showing the slow pro process of agriculture in india the onset of the decreased activity in agriculture began from uh, early 90s that have become the sharp in the late uh, 90s then it is also alarming that you know in india moving towards a point of no return for being a self reliant nation on the food surplus to a net import importer of foods all these uh, trends indicates the agriculture sectors in food is facing a, a crisis today so what does this actually mean so here in agriculture or in or in india so what is happening is there's a structural change leading to crisis situations where the uh, rate of growth of agriculture output is gradually uh, gradually declined uh, uh, by uh, year by year uh, which is relative contribution of agriculture's gdp by you know declining overall steadily the performance of the agriculture by crop categories are clearly indicates slowing down the process of agriculture in india so you could also say that you know uh, early 90s so early 90s there was a, you know uh, there was a um, uh, pro process that you know uh, net importer from the food uh, food were you know agriculture setters were forcing a crisis today so what had happened is you know uh, uh, late 90s you know you you, uh, you know we used to import or export the food uh, food um, uh, materials to, from one um, shipment to another shipment so there was a self reliant nation so our india was a self reliant nation so uh, the food surplus to be a net importer uh, these all these trends indicates all the agriculture uh, agriculture sectors in india are facing a crisis today so due to all this uh, there was a crisis today uh, the situation has uh, improved even uh, after multiple efforts and uh, schemes rolled out by government uh, you you are a social innovator if, if you are a social innovator uh, who wants back to work in the space uh, as a first step to understanding this issue you are required to conduct a root cause analysis so if you want if you uh, if you are a social innovator and you want to work in this space then what would you do you understand the uh, problem uh, you understand the root cause then you know you should conduct a root cause and uh, root cause analysis then again you should have a different method or resources conducted with the research people then you understand the root cause then you uh, and then again you help again uh, why why the declining agriculture is you know uh, going uh, years by years again you un you understand uh, the problems uh, deeply correct so uh, the situation here is again five why so what was why when what happened so again the, the here again we are just looking into five why again then two reasons why identify the root cause is important so root cause uh, again uh, why root cause is important then again if the if the problem is have uh, have been arise then knowing what was the reason from, from the you know the situation has caused you know what was the problem why it has happened you know uh, due to which we could have a, a flow chart or the flow analysis or the root cause analysis or so that we could you know sort it out where the problem is going on correct and uh, one mindset of the social innovator mindset you use today so here mindset our uh, mindset is you know um, you know critical thinking again so uh, while creating a critical thinking on problem solving mindsets uh, so all these you know help you out you know uh, solving a, or, or being a better social innovator uh, uh, this is also saying that you know, for every effect there is a root cause find and address the root cause rather than try fixing out the effect so uh, as there is no end 
to the later. Uh, so for the, like this, uh, you know, the, this is said by Celestial Shu. Uh, so you, what what happens is, you know, if you understand the root cause, or if you you know directly find uh, find and address the root cause and you know, what was the problem, instead of fixing the effects, uh, probably there will be no uh, no end later. Uh, you could have a better uh, uh, this thing, um, under understanding and uh, fixing out the root effects. Then what is problem solving today? Here again, we'll cover up with what is problem solving process, brainstorming, what is convergent and divergent thinking. Um, okay, uh, problem solving. If you're like, you know, for example, if you're stuck in the middle of the island within the three of your friends with no access of food, communication, and resources, you need to get out was 24 hours to have the, uh, to survive the chance. Uh, you need to work as a team if you have any chances to get out this. So if you are and if you and if you feel, uh, three of your friends are stuck in the middle of your island, what would you have done? So you know how will you uh, go about handling the situation? You know, you know uh, there's no uh, food, there's no communication, there's there is no any other resources uh, in this middle of the island. So how would you do handle the situation? So uh, within the 24 hours, you need to uh, get out, uh, get out of the island to uh, in order to uh, have the chance to survive. Um, then again, uh, you just basically you just uh, list out the steps. You understand the root cause. Then again, you steps to be followed. Uh, what are the steps to be taken? What how what are the chances that we could be uh, uh, chance uh, survive? Then again, you will be using the mindsets or the skills that are uh, again skills. Communications is uh, required again. Uh, communications. Then again, you just have a critical thinking. All these um, mindsets will be required in order to have a uh, problem solving process, right? So uh, let's understand what is the problem solving uh, in this video. Human-centered design is a creative approach to problem solving, one that starts with people and ends with innovative solutions tailored to meet their needs. When you understand the people you're trying to reach and then design from their perspective, not only will you arrive at unexpected answers, but you'll come up with ideas that they'll embrace. Human-centered design is both how you think and what you do with it. It's a process that consists of three phases, inspiration, ideation, and implementation. The inspiration phase is about learning on the fly, opening yourself up to creative possibilities, and trusting that as long as you remain... So uh, here in this video, it says that, you know, uh, you need inspiration, ideation. So all this, you know, uh, implies... Uh, so you need uh, to solve the problem. You also need inspiration, right? And, you know, problem solving. Um, then again, grounded in the desires of the people you're designing for, your ideas will evolve into the right solution. In the ideation phase, you come up with lots of ideas. Some too crazy to work, some too crazy not to try, and you'll refine them, tossing up the bad and improving the good. Making things helps you learn, grow, and test your ideas. Building a simple prototype gets your idea tangible and gives you something to put right back into the hands of the folks you're designing for. Without their input, you won't know if your solution is on target or how to evolve your idea. Keep iterating, testing, and integrating feedback until you've got everything just right. During the implementation phase, you'll build partnerships, shore up your business model, and get your idea out into the world, which was always the goal in the first place. Anyone can practice human-centered design. And everyone benefits because it gets us all to solutions that are adopted and embraced. Okay, uh, you saw you, you saw in this video. So basically, uh, is as in problem solving, you need inspiration, ideation, implementation. So what's in inspiration? The process is all about staying in touch with your users, letting those conversation guides towards the process. Then again, ideation says that this uh, this part of uh, where you generate a lot of ideas, ideas come with a good possible or the bad possible or not possible uh, situations. Then you start with the mix their ideas and come up with a workable solutions. Then these uh, leads uh, you change in the prototype, the way the users uh, touch feels for the solution. 
collect the user's feedback then you improve your uh, prototype repeat the process as many times which is uh, get, gets into a proper solution then again implement it uh, this stage uh, implementation that this stage is also uh, about getting your idea about in the world where into a hands of the users then you know you build the partnership between the business and you make the solution a reality yeah, that's right so problem solving process needs understanding empathy framing designing prototype feedback all these processes are required so what's understanding so understanding is in uh, as i say understanding the problem the problem and the users so, so when you understand the problems and the users so there is the chances that you have a, a, a solution outcome and you know you, you if you if you can see it's just empathy towards the problem and the users uh, like you know what was the problem and how the users are facing it you know that's empathy you can framing it and the you know how do you frame the problem you know how like you know how could you uh, frame the problem how, how it has arise the problem statement with the root cause uh designing ideation about the feasible situations prototyping again create working modules i know if you have you know created some prototype you know just work it out again if there's any changes then again just you know uh re-implement rework it out again re-implement again uh, you just do uh, based on the feedbacks right you always tend to get a feedback from uh, from uh, from your friends from your colleagues from your family so you just depend on the feedbacks right so most of the companies are just you know uh, so like for example if you're using some kind of you know uh, say um, you are looking on nokia sim i um, sorry uh, atel sim uh, you know uh, you just you know if you, you know, shift it from uh, you know atel to geo then the atel guys will call you up and say i know um, uh, please uh, let us feedback you know wh what's wrong with us uh, you know why are you shifting from atel to geo uh, just give us a feedback in, in order to improvise their uh, uh, frequencies or improvise the services to the customers or the users or we can say uh, so based on the feedback the you know process uh, you know, runs by so what is brainstorming brainstorming is the process of generating uh, as many ideas as possible through free thinking without being bound by restraints so uh, there are four rules for brainstorming quantity is more important versus quality don't crit uh, criticize or judge any idea encourage creativity combine and improve uh, ideas during the process so all these are four rules which is uh, required for brainstorming so what is brainstorming again uh, brainstorming is a process of generating as many ideas as possible through free thinking without any being bound to restraints okay uh, i'll just end it up here uh, uh, thank you guys uh, for being uh, so patient over here We'll see you soon. Thank you.